Hi guys, Mac here again. So VMware have just released a new version of VMware Fusion, which is this version. So this is version 12. This is the professional edition. Now the previous edition, version 11, I had a lot of performance issues with. It just wasn't as quick as Parallels and I just didn't like it as much as Parallels. So most of my workload has moved over to that. But I thought it'd be interesting to have a look and see if they've fixed anything with version 12. Now one thing that is interesting, if we look at the, the capabilities of this unit, in particular the licensing down here, you will see that there is actually a Fusion Player version now, which is free. Now there are some differences between the free player version and the pro as you'd expect and they tend to come down to the networking and the management of VMs so for instance you'll see that you can't do encrypted VMs on the player there's also quite a few more restrictions on the networking side of the world as well I also think there's some restrictions on the number of cores and things like that you can allocate to machines I've only just got this product it's only just been released so I thought what we could do is get a Windows 10 machine set up we'll get some basic benchmarks installed and we can have a look at the performance and then what I'll do later is another a direct comparison between the new version of Parallels which is desktop 16 and this version of Fusion which is VMware Fusion 12. So to start with then we're going to need a Windows 10 ISO so let's get a version of that downloaded. I'll put a link to this website in the description down below. We'll go with the latest one which is the May 2020 update. We need to select the language so I'm just going to go with English and I'm going to get the 64-bit download. Now fortunately my internet is pretty quick so that shouldn't take too long at all. There we go, that's all done, didn't take too long. Now what I'm going to do is actually just show you how easy it is just to get a copy of Windows 10 installed in Fusion. Now before we do that, let's have a look and see which Mac we're running on. This is a 8-core iMac Pro with 64 gig of RAM and I think it's a terabyte hard drive in there. I think it's only the base model, this one. I get a very similar performance on this as to what I do on my 16-inch MacBook Pro as well. So let's look at uh, getting Windows 10 installed and then what we can do is go through some of the benchmarks. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up a Windows 10 basic machine and it is really easy to do, far easier than most people seem to think it is. So what I'm going to do is install from disk of image there, click continue. It's going to try and find our image. Now sometimes it doesn't always find the image. If it doesn't, you can select there, use another disk or image and go and find your downloaded ISO or you can just drag and drop it into that window there. So we're going to select that. Now, you do have an option for easy install, much like you do with Parallels, in which case it will set up a lot of the Windows piece for you. So I'm, I'm going to use easy install for this particular demo. I'm not going to enter a product key, however. I am going to cho choose Windows 10 Professional because that's the version that I have uh, keys for. Now what will happen here is it will ask us if we do want to continue without a key, and I'm going to say yes. I'll, I'll deal with the activation later. Now at this point we can decide how integrated we want our Windows 10 machine to be with our Mac environment. So more seamless, you can see there that it will share your documents and applications with Windows. Files on the Mac that Windows supports will open in Windows. Windows can also modify your Mac's documents. So that will give you a more usable environment. Now if you're looking for a more technical setup, say something like a sandbox, you'll want something like this which is more isolated. So in that scenario there, it won't share your documents and applications. Now I'm going to go with more seamless now we can adjust all that stuff later on but let's stay with that option for now so this is a summary of the machine that we're setting up so it's a windows 10 64 bit you can see that's the iso we're using that's the hard drive that we've set up and it's got two gig of memory and it's using NAT for the networking. Now, I'm gonna actually go and customize that because I wanna add a bit more capability and a bit more performance to this machine. So I'm gonna click customize. First thing it's gonna do is ask me what I wanna save it as. So I'm just gonna give it the same name that I use for all of my Windows 10 library. And what it should allow us to do is actually go and customize the configuration of the machine. So let's go through some of these. So under general, you can see there, there's an option now to clean up disks after shutting down the virtual machine. That it is pretty good to have enabled. The other thing you can go through is things like sharing you can decide what folders are shared by default so I'm sharing my home folder on my Mac at the moment you'll also see things like desktop and all these folders here are actually mirrored into that virtual machine I'm going to leave that as it is the only other thing I want to look at are the processor allocation so this is a, an 8 core iMac Pro and it's got 64 gig of RAM and it's allocated two process cores and two gig of RAM I'm going to up that now typically to start with I tend to go with half the amount of available cores now because this machine supports high Threading, it will show that there's 16 available cores. There aren't really, there are only eight with hyper threading. I'm going to go with half and also I'm going to up the memory allocation there to eight gig. Depending on the machine you're running with, you might need to allocate lower resources to that. But for the purposes of this demo, let's go with that because that's 
typically the same setup I use in Parallels as well, and I want to be able to compare this to how a machine works in Parallels. There are also some other options under the advanced options here, but to be honest, I wouldn't really worry about those for now. Let's pop back into here. Other things you might want to look at where you can decide how your networking is going to work. So I'm set up for NAT, which will hide this machine behind the IP address of my Apple Mac. So I'm going to leave that as it is. We can also look at things like USB and Bluetooth. If we wanted to connect any of these things, direct to the virtual machine, we absolutely can. I'm not going to do that for this demo, but you can see there are quite a few options in here. So I've done that now. So I'm just gonna close this and here is our virtual machine. Now at this point, we can click the go button in the middle and it should go do our installation for us. And there we go, it's all done. Didn't take that long. I have to say it felt quicker than the previous editions. Let's get logged in. And here we have our Windows 10 machine. I'm just gonna make it a little bit bigger there. Okay, so the VMware Tools installer has made some settings and I'm guessing that's to do with the shared element about the shared desktop, shared downloads and all that sort of stuff. So we have to log out and back in again. So here's our Windows 10 machine. Now it is a straight fresh build as you've just seen. Let's have a look at the configuration in Task Manager you see that it's got eight virtual processors over one socket. It's got the eight gig of RAM allocated and I think a 60 gig drive allocated. Let's have a look. Yes, it has. So what I'm going to go do now is I'm going to get things like Office and also some benchmarking software installed. I'm not going to make you sit through that. Let me get them installed and we'll come back and we'll have a look at the performance of this machine. So I have this machine set up now. I've got Office installed. I've put Geekbench 5 on there, a couple of other small things. So let's go and have a look at the general performance. Now, before we get into it, I will say, even though this is a very early look at this, I haven't done any in-depth testing as yet. The look and feel of it so far is so much better than Fusion 11. It just feels a lot faster in pretty much everything that I do. And also there's a, a couple of areas that I have problems on, on Fusion 11, which don't seem to be present in this version. So let's start off. Let's fire up Office. We can have a look at the performance of that. There's Excel, Word, PowerPoint. We've even got Visio on here. It is a lot faster and a lot more fluid than VMware 11 was. Now, a big area of concern for me in the previous edition was uh, performance over the network. I got very random performances over gig ethernet or even over my Wi-Fi, but they seem to have fixed that as well. So let me show you what I mean. Let's run a network speed test here. There you go, you can see we're getting that sort of performance. Now to give you an idea, on the previous edition, I was getting probably about a third of that. And what's more, it was also unreliable. It just wasn't that consistent. So they've obviously gone and resolved that. It is not far off what I'm getting natively on the iMac Pro here. There we go. My network is a little bit busy at the moment. It's copying loads of stuff up to Azure. So that's what the minor differences are that you're seeing there. Well, what about benchmarks? So benchmarks with inside a single virtual machine. I'm not sure how useful they are. And in fact, what they will do is give you a baseline as to how it would compare to say a physical machine. What I'll do later on another video, so get subscribed, is do a direct comparison between Parallels and VMware Fusion. But let's have a look at some of the benchmarks. So this one here just tests the hard drive performance or the SSD in my Mac Pro. There you go, we're getting about three gigabytes per second read speed and about 2.4 gigabytes per second write. And again, if we have a look at the native speeds of this machine, there we go. You can see that Fusion is not that far off those figures. Again, that's improved over VMware Fusion 11. I had, I wouldn't say bad performance, but certainly sporadic and unpredictable performance on the previous edition. What about other benchmarks? Well, let's go and have a look at Geekbench 5. Now I've already run these benchmarks. They should be on the desktop, there you are. So you can see this is getting a single score, single core score of 828 and a multi-core of 4564. Now those scores are okay in isolation, but how do they compare to other machines? Well, I have a spreadsheet here, which has some additional numbers in. Let's get that open. And there you can see our Fusion 12 virtual machine. Now looking at the multi-core score, it puts it in some decent company there. So it's only a bit slower than my six core Dell XPS from last year. And it is faster than the 2020 13 inch i5. So that gives you a, a benchmark as to, to where the performance of this machine actually sits from a processor point of view. Now, obviously if I allocated more cores to this, I'd get better performance, but this is on quite a fast iMac Pro. What about things like Cinebench? Well, we can get that fired up as well. I think I've already run the benchmark for this. 
there we go you can see that it's at 2065 which puts it between those sort of processor performance elements so the performance under 12 is a lot better than what I experienced under 11. Now, what about other areas? Well, the kind of things I struggled with under 11 were things like suspending a machine, taking a machine out of suspension, also looking at things like snapshots. So let's give that a go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this machine into suspension. And the way I'm going to do that is just click the X at the top there. You can see it's suspending. And that's now done. So how do we take that machine back out of suspension? There we go. I'm going to hit the go button again. That's it. And we're back where we were. So again, that seems a lot smoother and a lot faster than it was. Well, what about things like snapshots? So let's go and take a snapshot of this machine. Take a snapshot. There we go. You can see on the taskbar there that it's still going. So we'll let that finish. There we go. That's finished. Now, that did take quite a while and it is a lot slower than parallels so how big a problem that is for you well that's going to be down to your use case but personally i use snapshotting quite a lot and i think i at that sort of performance i'd probably be inclined to actually clone the machine and actually keep multiple copies of it what about restoring a snapshot well what i'm going to do is i'm just going to remove some software from this machine just to for example i'll move, remove office i won't make you sit through this because it's not very interesting let me get it removed and we'll come back to it in a moment so as you can see, I've got Office removed from this machine now. The icon should have disappeared. Well, I haven't uninstalled Visio. So how long does it take to restore that snapshot and get our Office back? Well, let's do that. We'll look at virtual machines. We'll go to our snapshots. We'll go restore snapshot. I don't want to save the current states and we'll let this restore and just see how long it takes. There we go. So the restore time is actually pretty good. You can see we've got our office back. It's just that time to actually take the snapshots. It still seems very long compared to parallel. So in fact, let me just do a comparison for you on another screen here. There we go. I have a server running a whole lab. You can see it's got some domain controllers, two domains. We've got some clients. We've also got Skype for Business in there. Let me show you the difference on here. I'm going to take a snapshot from this one this is domain controller we'll just do a test snapshot on that one there we go that's done we'll do a test snapshot on that one that's done you can see there's no activity going on and also now if we look at the restore time so if i want to go back to that test snapshot that we've just done we'll go to snapshot And there we are, we're back where we were. So as you can see, there must be a fundamental difference between how Fusion handles its snapshots and, and how Parallels does. And I have to say that Parallels seems to handle it a lot better. In fact, if, if we jump back on that machine, on, on my server here, you'll see that there's a whole range of snapshots at different points in development of this lab that I'm I'm using for example so I find snapshots really useful given the time that it takes to do them in fusion I think I might be inclined to actually replica and duplicate machines rather than actually use the snapshot technology like I say this is a very first early look uh, to see what Fusion 12 is like. So far, what I've seen, it's all positive. A lot of the problems that I experienced in 11 seem to have gone. There's still that slight performance issue with snapshots, which I'm going to do a bit more investigation on just to see why, why that might be the case. And perhaps I'm misunderstanding something. But so far, I think it's quite a good update. Now, I am going to do a direct comparison between Parallels Desktop 16 and VMware Fusion 12. So get subscribed if you want to see that. And if you have any specific questions, drop them in the comments and I'll try and get them answered for you.